Hello everyone, this is Suresh from Azure ADB. Today our topic is how to create Databricks Community Edition account. So first what you have to do is we have to go to Google, then just type Databricks and you select and here first one you select it, Databricks Community Edition login. It will open new page. So here, uh, latestly, uh, recently, they launched Databricks feed, free edition. So this account will see later how to create this one. So currently, I'm going to this one, use legacy community edition. So that means this is our Databricks community free, free edition. So just click on this use legacy community edition and just type your mail. So this is my email ID I'm going to using here to create a Databricks Community Edition. Just click here, continue with email, and it will ask you to enter the verification code. So it will come to your email. So here, see here, this is the email I given. So here you will get mail like this, verification code. So just enter here. JPM. So JPM and LL3. So as soon as you enter this verification code, it automatically opens your Databricks community. So now it will open our Databricks page. So here you can see your uh, e. So E means your name shortcut. So because I given an event is Suresh, so it's showing A. So you just click here. So it will show you your to which email ID you created. And you have two more options. One is a logout. So whenever you want to close, means your work is done, then you want to log out, just log out. And if you want to delete your account, just click on delete account. Or you can go to these settings. So you can go to these settings and you can see, so what are the options available? Just wait for a few seconds. Yeah, so here one is workspace domain. So under this, we have few options. And under user, we have few options. So here you're showing display my name and groups. And you can check here identity, identity and access. See management and permission. So you can give access. Suppose uh, if you're working in your team and you want to give some access to your teammates, then you can use this one, manage, and you can enter your email ID here. So your teammate email ID, you can enter here by clicking on add user. So, so that he will also get permission here. So next you can go to compute. So in compute, you have uh, many options. So depends on your requirement, you can check this one. Okay, so similarly, we have advanced options. So in advanced, Options, we have, again, multiple options. So mainly, normally we'll use this option frequently. So if you keep it on, then DBS folder. So whenever you upload files, you know, so that time this uh, option will be active. So I will show you this later. Just uh, uh, keep in mind, it is on. So where, where it is reflects here. So next you can check your profile here. See it's showing profile and groups. So if you have any groups, you can create here. It will show here. And you can go to developer and you can, you can check what are the options available in each and every. Okay, so you can check here. So mainly in these options, what we frequently use is 
this one dark mode so by default it is light mode so you can change to either dark mode or light mode so this one you can use it Okay, so if you are uh, uh, writing SQL syntax, if you want to highlight the error, so you can check or uncheck this option. Okay, so like this in settings, we have different options. So next we'll go here. So what is this workspace? So if you want to create any new notebook, you can come here. You can come to this workspace. So since I already created uh, uh, some of the notebooks here, so I have in this workspace, in my workspace. So in my workspace under user and under user, if you go to workspace user and this is my email ID. So under this, I created multiple folders and each folder has notebooks. See here, I created multiple notebooks. If I click on Databricks, I have subfolders and in each folder I have notebooks. Okay, so this notebook. Suppose if you want to create uh, any new folder, you can come here, you can select here, you can click and create folder. Suppose I will mention training. So it will create here. You can observe it will add here this new folder see here training folder is created so under folder i can create new notebook yeah so you can rename this and just uh, click here and you can do control a Click here and do control A and you can mention some name here, notebook name. And you can start writing your code here. So you can write in different languages like see first one is Python. That is uh, your default uh, notebook language. Second is Scala, uh, sorry, second is uh, SQL, Scala, R. So like these different languages, you can use it. So if you're working Python, so you can write Python code here. So if you want to work in SQL, just uh, type percent SQL and you can write your SQL code here. And if you see here, your here table of contents is your first option. And uh, so currently we don't have anything. So if you want to get some table of contents here, so just mention this is dev. So I mentioned dev. As soon as I click here, it will reflect here see dev so again i will click one more code here and here i will mention tst see here whatever i am adding here it is reflecting here so this is table of contents next the second one is a workspace see in workspace so i created this one training okay this i have one folder here so similar way this is catalog Okay, so this catalog and this catalog are same. And main option is our compute. So compute is to create the cluster. So here we have two types of clusters. One is all-purpose compute cluster and job uh, compute. So see, I already created one cluster and it is stopped. So, so since it is stopped, and I want to remove this cluster, you can simply click on delete and you can remove this cluster. And if you want to create new one, either you click here, create compute, or you can click here, create compute, and you select the options here. So first we need to give a cluster name, click there and try to edit. I will mention here, training, Databricks. And second thing you have to select is runtime. So default 12.2 LTS is there, Scala and Spark version. So, and latest version is seven. So 
uh, always keep default one toll toll point two or you can keep any of the higher version so usually i'll keep this one 15.4 okay so i selected 15.4 and these are all default and just you click on create compute so it will take some time some at least uh, three to four minutes it will take to create the cluster so by that time we'll see some other options if you go to recent what is recent is so what all the notebooks you worked recently so all are it showing here see uh, at the starting of the demo i created this notebook training so that is my latest recent notebook see here and if you click again on recent see here so earlier that means seven days back i worked on this notebook so you can click on here and you can see that particular notebook so suppose if you're working today on some few notebooks some two or three notebooks then every time no need to go workspace and that particular folder so you can directly go to your recent and you can directly open from here yeah so this is that notebook so suppose today you are working on this top these five notebooks and if you want to go any of the notebook just click on that notebook and you will go there and catalog so we'll see what is catalog so catalog is like to up upload the files so when i saw initially i told one option uh, uh, keep it on dbf dbfs option so if you uncheck that option this option won't be available so always keep on that option so that this dbfs will come so always our default location is under dbfs user hive warehouse so here you can create your folders here you can create your folder and you can upload your files here so this is the option to upload the files just click on upload and you just click on here and it will open dialog window so from here you can upload the file so if you have any uh, csv file or json file you can just select here and upload it uh, suppose i will try to upload any one of the folder suppose uh, So I'm selecting this file. I'm trying to upload this one. So once it is uploaded, see it will show you where, which location it got uploaded. So it uploaded to file store. So if you want to change the location, you can just select here and you can go to your folder. So suppose I want to uh, keep it in inside interview questions. So I'm going here under file store, tables, and interview questions. So I'm just confirming. Okay, so next I'm selecting this JSON file and just uploading here. Okay, so this is how you can upload the file. So this workflows, so this is not it won't it not working under databricks free edition so you had to pay for that you had to upgrade to pay version then then only it will work here next you can see search so you can search if you know the file name suppose i created training so if i search here 
So it giving you that particular folder. Or you can click here on this new button. So here you have option add or upload data. So if you want to upload the data, no? so you can after adding, you just uncheck this one. So in this add or upload data, so you will get here. So whatever you are getting you know, under catalog, so same thing will come here. So same process we have to follow here. And next option you have notebook. So you can directly go to your notebook. You just click on notebook and it will take you directly to the notebook. Okay, so next we have more options. You just click on cluster. See here, so earlier I uh, try to create compute now here cluster. So it directly coming here. So here asking to create new cluster, but I already uh, started one cluster. So to check that, just click on compute. So here it will be there. See here cluster got started. So you can click on this and you can verify your cluster details. See here 15.4 I selected. Okay, so these are all I kept uh, default. So as of now, I am not linked to any notebooks. So that's why it's showing notebooks as zero. Okay, so one now uh, cluster is uh, created. So here we have two options. So one is edit option. If you want to edit anything in this cluster, you can edit it. Suppose I want to uh, change 15.4 to some 16.4. If you select this, then again cluster will restart. You'll, so it will take again some three minutes. Okay, so so like this, you can edit the cluster. Or suppose if you are working on something and you feel that you want to log out and you want to terminate your cluster, you want to stop the cluster, then you just click on this terminate. It will ask you to give the confirm if you give as soon as you click on confirm the cluster will get stop so similarly you have these options so you can check uh, this view json so if you click on this so whatever this whole thing it will show you in json format see here all the cluster details it's showing in json format so this is our uh, start to timestamp and see here what is the spark question so all the water cluster options you know it, everything will show here so this is my name so username is showing so legacy single user standard so i selected standard and spark question state is running so cluster is uh, still running so number of cores i selected is two okay so like this some uh, all the information will be here if you check view json so then if you want to clone this uh, cluster you can clone this you can click on clone and uh, you can create one more cluster and you can do restart or you can do delete. So all the options will be available here. So these are all the high level options available in Databricks Community Edition that I explained. So I will make uh, 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 more videos on in detail on this. So this is how you can create a Databricks Community Edition. Uh, so that's all about this video. If you really like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.